Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's October the 5th and we're looking at 2 Thessalonians and chapter 2. And 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 is referring to the day of the Lord. It's the day of Christ's return to earth to establish his kingdom, to judge the world and to bring in everlasting righteousness. Nothing to do with the rapture, but let's look at the passage. Now, <clears throat> he says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, or troubled, neither by spirit or nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of the Lord, so the day of Christ, is at hand. There were people in that day, in the day of Paul's life and ministry, that were going around saying, oh the day of the Lord is coming, the day of the Lord is coming. And Paul says, no, 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 stop it. He says, do not be soon shaken in your mind, or troubled, neither by spirit, or by word, or by letter, fake letters from us, because you see people made up fake letters and put Paul's name at the bottom hoping that people would take account of what they're saying because it had his name on it um, and they're all saying that the day of the Lord is at hand you said, don't believe it it's just not true I've told you I told you when I was with you that that is not the case he says let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except first there shall be a falling away there shall be a falling away I will talk about that in a moment and that the man of sin shall be revealed so then <clears throat> those who say today of course the day of the Lord is here the, 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 the moon is red and the sun is not going to shine and the stars will fall from heaven no no do not be deceived in this he says that day of the Lord cannot come unless two things happen there be a falling away and the man of sin is revealed now there cannot be a falling away until after the rapture the rapture is the event which will take all sound Bible teachers and evangelists and pastors out of this world. And when that happens, there will be a there will be a dearth for the Word of God. There will be a desert in relation to Bible teaching and prophecy and the signs of God and the judgments of God that will come upon this earth in those days will cause men's hearts to fail them in fear there won't be any Christians left there will be people in the world of course there will be Jews and Gentiles, men and women but more important there will be the righteous and the unrighteous none of these people are going to be Christians the Christians, us, the church will have been long gone but what will be left are men and women who are either righteous or unrighteous and amongst those people there will be some that the more they see the judgments of God the more holy they become but there will be a lot of people the majority may I say that when they see the terrible judgments of God their hearts will fail there will be he says a falling away there will be people that will forsake their God there will be people that will cease to attend synagogue there won't be any Christian churches the Christian church is going in the rapture but there will be there will be people that will fail in their confidence the false confidence that they had in God and there's something else that's going to happen as well before the day of the Lord he says that the man of sin be revealed <clears throat> now Paul has a lot to say about the man of sin he says the man of sin is called the son of perdition he opposeth and exalts himself above all that is God or that is worshipped so that 
so that as God he sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God this is a person that's going to go to Jerusalem and he's going to go to the temple and he's going to put a throne there and he's going to sit on it he's going to sit on it and he will accept the worship of men as if it is to God himself and this is why the judgment of God will come upon the world there will be famine, there will be earthquakes, there will be pestilence, there will be fire from heaven. Why? Because this man of sin sits upon the throne of God. That's why. <coughs> then Paul says, in verse 5, he says, uh, Don't you remember me telling you all this? Remember ye not, when I was with you, I told you these things. People have a short memory people have a short memory Paul had explained everything to the Thessalonians but they had failed to take it in they'd failed to realize that after the rapture there'd be a falling away and then as well as the falling away there would be the rise of the Antichrist he cannot come until after the rapture now let me explain why <coughs> he says verse 6 and now we know that withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. That's a difficult phrase. But let's move on. Verse 7. This is my password for today. Very, very important, crucial passage. He says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Now let me just get this right. The word mystery doesn't mean something s s s sinister or, or mysterious. <laughs> it means just something that previous generations never knew but which now has been revealed by God to his prophets and it's the mystery of iniquity there's lots of mysteries in the scripture there's seven of them all together but this one is the mystery of iniquity it is the thing it is, a, it is describing the, the evil domain of the antichrist the mystery of of iniquity and he says it doth already work so the the mystery of iniquity was something that had begun in Paul's day it was the whole concept of an evil genius the Antichrist that would come into this world but although it had begun in a very little way in Paul's way Paul's day it still is continuing in a little way even in the world today <coughs> now then <coughs> now the next phrase <coughs> the next phrase is difficult in the authorized version now I'm using the King James version not because I like it particularly although I do like it I'm using it because it links with all the reference material that we need to use in the home Bible college it links to the dictionaries it links to the expository dictionaries it links to the lexicons and therefore we need to use the authorized version but <clears throat> what we've got to remember is that the authorized version was the language of 1611 it was the language of 400 years ago some of the words of that language have now become obsolete we dropped the word the and thou and so on some of the words have completely passed out of all use altogether and some of the words of those days have actually flipped their meaning they flip their meaning we have an example of it today if you speak to an older person about something that's wicked they will say that's terrible and bad and, and sinful but if you speak to a young person about something that's wicked they will tell you that that's good wicked is cool and wicked is good now so the word wicked then even in our lifetimes has flipped its meaning it used to mean something that's bad it now can mean something that's really good now in this particular verse a word has flipped its meaning let me read it to you it says the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way now that word let and letteth it means the opposite it means today what we would use the word today hinder prevent okay in those and it still it still is the same word 
And what the word means is the gatekeeper. There is one, he is the gatekeeper. And he will prevent this man of sin, this son of perdition, from being revealed. So who is this person? It says, he who now prevents him, will prevent him, until he is taken out of the way. So who is this person that stops the Antichrist from being revealed in the world today? The answer is, it's the Holy Spirit. You see, the age in which we live, the, the age of the Holy Spirit, began at the day of Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit came down upon the, upon the, the, the assembled gathering. And the Holy Spirit is the key person of the whole of this age. He came down at Pentecost and he will leave at the rapture. Because he's leaving with us. He, he came to be... Uh, in the church and upon the church and when the church goes to heaven he's going to be going with us so then <clears throat> verse 8 and then shall that wicked be revealed so the antichrist he could be alive today of course could be alive today but nobody knows he will not be revealed to the world till the rapture has taken place he will not be revealed. His work will be hindered by the Holy Spirit. And it will continue to be hindered by the Holy Spirit until the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way. And when the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way, then the Antichrist will have full reign. But he cannot have full reign yet until the Holy Spirit leaves so <clears throat> the day of the Lord then the day of God's judgment upon this world it cannot occur until the rapture has happened it cannot occur until there is a falling away and it cannot occur until the Holy Spirit is removed and it cannot occur until the Antichrist is revealed so all those people that say to you well the day of the Lord is here and the, and, and the wrath of God is coming no it isn't things might be bad but they won't be as bad as those days the rapture first the falling away the antichrist and the removal of the Holy Spirit the removal of the Holy Spirit is with the rapture and only when the Holy Spirit leaves will the antichrist be able to begin his wicked work so my password for the day is the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way God bless you look forward to speaking to you tomorrow if some of this you find a little bit difficult to understand don't worry listen to it again listen to it again put it on when you're making a cup of tea just listen to the words get used to the phrases and it will eventually sink in god bless you have a wonderful day bye for now